Hello and welcome to my F123 Lamborghini My Team Career Mode here today for part 62 for the Brazilian Grand Prix and for what could be our third world title crowning weekend. We have a 48 point lead over Max Verstappen. This is a grid though for the sprint. We're on pole alongside Carlos Sainz, then it's Hamilton and Charles Leclerc. Gasly and George Russell, Piastri and Max Verstappen, Bottas and Pochere round out the top 10, then it's Norris and Yuki Tsunoda, Lance Stroll and Enzo Fittipaldi, Esteban Ocon and Dennis Halger, Lawson and Alex Albon, Joe and Logan Sargent and on the final row of the grid is Kevin Magnussen ahead of Nick De Vries. So we're here on the grid then ahead of the sprint race, the final sprint race of the season. It's going to be straightforward on the soft tyres for the sprint, 12 laps. This is our qualifying lap then that put us to pole position. We found half a second on that final run. But in 12 laps time we could put ourselves in a very handy position for the world title. So let's go to it then. It's the Brazil sprint. And it's lights out and away we go. We've got a good start compared to Carlos Sainz. He's going wheel to wheel with Charles Leclerc. And he's been beaten into turn one by Leclerc. We've pulled out a fairly good lead going through the center races. As George Russell's going wheel to wheel with the Ferrari trying to go around the outside. But he's too far back as the back out of it. But most importantly, we lead the opening sector of the sprint race. Can now we get away? from the Ferrari behind and lap two that's pretty much what we were doing we were just slowly eking out the gap to the Ferrari behind and further back though this is Gasly being hunted down by our teammate has dropped it and spun round and Piash has driven into the side of him that's brought out the virtual safety car everyone stopped behind Gasly's in the middle of the track as everyone gets stopped, Gas is still in the middle of the track and Piastri is pulling over. He's out of the sprint. He must have suspension damage or something after hitting the side of Gasly. Gasly's still going. This is some replays then of what happened. This is Pacher's point of view and he just drives blatantly into Gasly there. Gasly in the middle of the track after his mistake. This is Lance Stroll's point of view. And he just turns through, everyone's ghosted and he actually collects the debris from his teammate. And on to lap 5 now and the safety car, the virtual safety car is ending. So we can get back racing, we are a second and a half ahead of Charles Leclerc and through the first two corners we go. Further back though, this is Max Verstappen pulling off. He's retired, his engine's popped. Lando Norris is hitting the back of him and he's going into the pits to make a pit stop in the sprint. It's ruined his weekend. It's going to be a long way through and that's brought out the safety car. Just after the VSC came in, the safety car, the full safety car is out. We managed three corners before it came out and we nearly overtake the safety car as well there. As it was going so slow, we basically had to stop to let the safety car back through. And that has wiped out our gap. Can we pull away though once more and pull away? Sonoda has got a penalty. He was also caught up in the Verstappen incident as well. I think he hit the back of Max after um, Lando did but lap 9 3 laps of racing to go then in the sprint the safety car peels in we can now manage the pace we're going to wait right to the line because we don't want to give everyone a slipstream we are racing though once more here in Brazil down into the centre S's can we keep it clean going through there and the answer was yes and then we just did what we did earlier on in the sprint. Got out the gap to the Ferraris behind. And we are going to come through the final kink to win the Brazil sprint race. So we win the sprint then just ahead of 
the both Ferraris. Lewis Hamilton, P4, comes home just ahead of his teammates. This is the grid then for the sprint. Piastri and Max Verstappen both at the back. Max, as this is the standings, been jumped now by Lewis Hamilton. So the gap now in the World Championship is 52 points. So we don't even have to finish this race to be world champions if Hamilton doesn't get at least 8th. The championship's done, we're world champions, we don't have to finish the Grand Prix. We are 36 laps away from our third world title. So let's see then if we can convert the sprint pole into the race win. So we're here on the grid then, head of the Grand Prix, a fairly standard race, starting on the softs, going over to the mediums. And hopefully that strategy will take us to our third world title. And also hopefully we can just do what we did in the sprint. Pull away, not worry about everything behind and hopefully have a less dramatic race than last time out in Mexico. And we had those two red flags and many, many crashes. But here we go though. This is the Brazil race. It's lights out and away we go. We've got a fairly decent start and so has George Russell. They have to go straight through the middle of both the Ferraris. Charles Leclerc has been demoted all the way down to P4. He's been jumped by his teammate. He's had an awful start. But the most important thing is we've pulled away at the opening couple of corners from George from Carlos Sainz in the background. Leclerc was nearly under pressure from Lewis Hamilton and we were just pulling away we skip all the way on to lap 9 because really not a lot was really happening we were just keeping the gap around 2 seconds to George Russell outside of the DRS and Leclerc was all over the back of Carlos Sainz Ferrari desperately needed team orders but it was never going to come because that Ferrari engine has let go in the back of the Ferrari and what was looking like a fairly good opportunity for Ferrari to win a race has left in retirement for Charles Leclerc after he started on the front row we're now going to skip all the way on to lap 16 because really not a lot was really going on in this race we were just so dominant in cruise control slowly pulling away from George Russell in the Mercedes this time last season would have been an epic battle due to that very tight world championship battle we had. Less dramatic this time out. It was time to stop to perfection. And now where can we come out as we have a big tank slapper on the cold tyres as we come out of the pits then. As we're going to come out just behind Enzo Fittipaldi. That's not very good. We need to get overtaken quick. He's going longer, of course. He started on the medium, so we need to get this job done very, very quickly. As we're going to go to the inside, round that tight corner where Fisichella and Trilly had a crash all those years ago. And we're a pass now. Lance Stroll, though, is further up the road, who is still yet to pit as well. So we need to close up to him and get past him as quickly as possible as well. But now, one lap later, this is George Russell boxing to make his one and only stop of the day. He's going to the mediums as well. But now where do we come out relative to the Mercedes? As he turns us down the pit lane, we're already going through turn one. We've gained a lot of time. More time than we already had on the Mercedes. We go through the third corner. There's Enzo Fittipaldi going down the pit straight and there's George Russell, he's nowhere near the Alfa Romeo. The gap now is very, very big and we can just keep extending. As towards the end of that lap we did catch Lance Stroll, he was still yet to pit. But he didn't really cause us any sort of drama as he boxes there and Enzo Fittipaldi was caught by George Russell and he boxes as well there. So no drama for George Russell. The further back though, this is Max Verstappen, he's getting caught up and that Honda engine has blown once again. This weekend could not go any worse for Max Verstappen. The engine pops in the sprint, Red Bull put a new engine in and that engine pops in the race as well. 
no points for Max Verstappen as now we lap 23 you can see the gap now six seconds back to George Russell we were just in cruise control just managing the pace we always seem to go well here in Brazil and it's happening once again we won last year we won the year before we seem to win every time we come to Brazil and now this is us just lapping the very slow Haas's and Williams are still pointless so far this season they've only got three more races including this one to get a point otherwise it's going to be another pointless season for them as now we get closer and closer to the Williams and lapping that as much drama as we had in this race one extreme to the other really for us compared to last time out in Mexico and now this is the gap to George Russell the gap now 13 seconds nearly a pit stop we did have the fast lap I did think about trying to go longer trying to get the gap out maybe try for the fastest lap this is Lewis Hamilton though just been in third the entire race haven't really got the pace but at the end of lap 36 we're gonna round the final corner we've had a dominant season it ends in dominant style we are a three-time champion of the world oh man that's it it's all over and you are the world champion what a drive what a season well done and so the celebrations begin and well earned they are indeed it may have looked simple at times but as any racing driver will tell you competing at this level at the very top is anything but simple there's no catching them now then we have a new world drivers champion not just victory today then but the championship as well what a spectacular season they've had and congratulations to the whole team tell me Ant. How do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. So that's been your Brazilian Grand Prix. It's now four wins in a row here in Brazil for us, including the sprint races as well. And we are now a three-time champion of the world, joining Jackie Stewart on three world championships for a British driver as well, I believe. Just a dominant, dominant weekend for us. George didn't have the pace for us today, really, and neither did science that Ferrari not being a very good race car in the end. Piastri having a good race after he retired in the sprint to finish P9. That's good for him. Two retirements, though, was Max Verstappen. Awful weekend for him and the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc as well. So, the Drivers' World Championships then. We now have a 66-point lead, which is enough for us to be world champions. Now the gloves are off for the final two races. Max Verstappen was ahead of both Mercedes, is now back behind both of them. He's really had an interesting battle with both of the Mercedes this season. At the bottom though, there's still two drivers still yet to score, being both the Haas's. Logan Sargent got point, that was last time out in Mexico. In terms of the constructors then, and our full attention can turn to this now, 33 points the gap in the Constructors World Championships. They're fighting one-handed. Piastri hasn't been at it this season, has he? So Mercedes can wrap up the Constructors next time out in Portimao. So we're gonna have to be on it next weekend to try and stop that from happening. But that's been your Brazilian Grand Prix and the Championship crowning weekend. And what's been a very dominant season for us, we win the title 
in style. We head to Portimao next for the penultimate round of the season and we'll be looking to make a back to back wins there after we started stone dead last last season and entered god mode to win that race. We've wrapped up the title, we've had a dominant dominant season, we are now a three time champion of the world.